Well, hey Joe, I'm Tim from Southwest Microwave. Welcome to our test site, our factory, where we do a lot of sensor development. Uh, we do testing and evaluation out here, which is why we've got a bunch of cables on the fence. But today, what we're gonna look at is a splice unit. So we've applied another sensor cable up to the tire part, just so we can see what we're doing. So I know from over time, there's nicks and cuts inside the cable. Uh, I know from experience with fiber that um, just even one strand of fiber is very difficult to repair uh, and you need a lot of specialized tools and most of the time training with those tools Precisely. to be able to repair that um, cable correctly. So um, how do we do it with um, Southwest Microwave? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Southwest Microwave Splice Unit is a low cost device. It's intended to provide a good solid RF connection from one cable to another when it's damaged. And it just takes a few hand tools, very little training, if any at all, in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, let's see. So now we have a damaged cable. What is the process from here? Sure, so with the MicroPoint system, the way we attach the cable to the fence is we pull the zip ties from one diamond up through the next diamond, and the sensor cable lies in these channels along the chain link fence. So if it is damaged, simply slide the sensor cable down the fence okay. to bring in some excess slack from either side. So now we have some excess slack these are gonna to come together up in our splice unit. So I've got here a splice unit two for the Intrepid MicroPoint 2 system. And when you first open these, you're gonna notice a few things. On the MicroPoint 2 splice unit, there's four screws that hold the lid on. Underneath this lid, there's a gasket that runs around to seal it from the outside elements. And these screws are captured within the lid, so you don't have to worry about them falling out or getting lost in the rust. That's ruts. a nice feature. It is. Also, on the bottom side, we have two strain relief blocks which hold the cable in place so it's not pulling on it if the fence is moving around in foul weather conditions. Okay. So if we look on the underside of this, you'll notice that the gasket lies in this channel. Hold that for me. And on the actual splice kit itself, there's a small ridge that runs around the edge. Okay. That gasket sits along this ridge, and when you tighten down the four screws, it pinches that and keeps this safe inside. It keeps moisture out of the Exactly. Box. Okay. So inside the splice unit, we're gonna find the actual circuit board itself. You'll see there's some other items inside this baggie, and you'll wanna pay attention and keep those safe. You don't wanna lose them. We're gonna use all of these items during the splice process. First and foremost, the most important part is the circuit card. There's no components on this card. It just shorts one cable to the next and allows for a good clean splice between the center conductors and the sensor wires to allow good RF transmission. Okay. Could you hold that for me? Sure. We have two packets of dielectric grease. These dielectric grease is, is provided to uh, be able to seal the ends of the sensor cable. So if you look closely at the MicroPoint cable, you'll notice that it, it's comprised of multiple layers, multiple conductors and some dielectric in between it. When the cable expands in the heat, it can draw in moisture. When it contracts, it can push that moisture further into the sensor cable. So we wanna seal that using this dielectric so that it doesn't draw moisture in. Okay. And then you'll notice we have two different sizes of zip ties. We have the larger ties, there should be four, and that's what we're gonna to use to mount the enclosure to the actual fence. And then there's two smaller ties, and these smaller ties are gonna be used during the splice process to hold parts of the cable together. We'll get into that in a moment. Okay. So the first step to doing the splice is we want to loosen up the strain relief blocks. So the first thing you want to do is put the sensor cables into the box because the last thing you want to do is have done a splice and then find out that you forgot to put the box on. Yeah, that would be frustrating. <laughs> I've done it, it's not fun. <laughs> so let's slide the sensor cables in, make sure we've actually got room to work. If you don't have room to work, you may want to pour, pull more, a little more sensor cable uh, down the line. And that's just easy to, to do yourself. because you left drip loops at the other end. Exactly. We've got six foot drip loops at the processor and at the link unit sides of the sensor cable. Okay. So now that we've got this open, we've got our sensor cables pulled through. We have some wiggle room to work here. Uh, we're not going to mount the box just yet. We're just going to set this aside and we're going to be working on the ends of the cables. Okay. So you'll notice on the circuit board, let me see that guy. This is going to land like this with the sensor cables coming up either side. Okay. And we don't really have to worry about using any extra tools here because the stripping tool is provided. That's nice.
And while a splice can be done with a single person pretty easily, it's always nice to have a buddy to help hold the parts and pieces. Sure. Especially since, so they don't get lost. Exactly. So we take the terminal block, right along the middle of the block, you notice there's a razor and a center hole. If we place the sensor cable inside that hole and twist, the razor helps remove the outer jacket without damaging the braid or any of the internal components. As I make my way stripping this down the cable, pulling off the outer jacket, you notice I've been twisting for a little while and it's only it moved a little, a little time bit. consuming, yes. Yep, and I have a pin on you. I do actually. Awesome. So we take our pin, we can put it in one of these little screw holes on the outside, and we can easily remove that outer jacket just by twisting this around this way. That is much quicker. Yeah, it's a lot easier that way. So usually my rule of thumb is pull about three inches off. Okay. If I've got at least three inches of outer jacket off, I've got room to move. Okay. So we twist it back and forth a few times. Simply pull that off. This will come off. And we set that aside. Okay. So we're going to do that for both cables. And the next step, once we've got the outer jacket removed, is to trim back the braid. Let me see that circuit card for a second. So this is a circuit card we're using, our splice unit. It's going to lay like this. The sensor cables, the braids, are going to land on these two copper conductors. Okay. So it's eventually going to land like this, and we're going to strip off all the braid down to that point. Well, the easiest way to measure it is by using the terminal block that it's going to be landed on. This guy. Hmm. Multi-use tool. Exactly. We push it like that. We're going to loosen the braid a little bit, and we push it down. And this is a little insider trick that uh, we usually reserve for the training classes. You notice how I pushed it down and I pinched it around. It created this nice little ridge right there. Mm -hmm. With my side cutters, these are flush on one side. I can easily come in here, trim off that ridge that I made, and now you notice all the excess braid comes off and we have the perfect length of braid that the terminal block is gonna land on. Wow, that is very easy. Pretty simple. So what is the purpose of the braid on the cable? So the micro point system resides on a floating ground and the braid is what has that ground potential. So by making sure this braid lands flush or evenly on those conductors, we're passing the floating ground potential from one cable or one part of the splice onto the next. Okay. This helps with lightning protection, damage from ground surge and things like that. Sure. So you notice there's tin foil on here. I take this foil and I pull it back a little bit, exposing the inner parts of the cable. The foil is intended to provide EMI RFI protection and essentially to keep that radar signal inside the cable. Okay. So I'm gonna nick this edge and then pull this guy back a little bit and you notice I've exposed the mylar. Mm -hmm. This is where our small cable ties come in. So I take one of the small cable ties that we provided. And if you look close, you notice I'm not putting it on the braid or the foil. I'm actually putting it on the mylar. Okay. The reason I'm putting it on the mylar is because we want to make sure that these sensor wires inside are electrically isolated from the, from the conductors as the braid and the tin foil. Trim off the excess. I'm going to pull a little bit of this back. One side is going to be easy and one side will be a little more difficult. You know, it's as I pull it back, I just expose a little bit of it and then I just pull it down. And when I pull it down, it kind of cinches it around that zip tie just to provide a little extra okay. layer of protection. Right. So it doesn't slide off later on. Exactly. And once we've got the mylar pulled back, we're going to trim the excess. And then we give the cable a little flick and it exposes the sensor wires. Okay. That's a good trick. Yeah, so now that we've got one side done, let's go ahead and do the same on the other. So we flick sure. that. Now we've got two cables that are set up and ready to be applied to the splice unit. So you might be wondering, how do we measure these? Because there's a certain length we need to go to, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we use the terminal itself. So we're gonna lay this on the block. We're gonna trim the excess. And then trim a little bit of excess on the sensor wires. and now we're set up and ready. If you don't have experience with this, I recommend using a wire, wire tool that you can trim this off without cutting the center conductor. I've been doing it for a little while, so I'm gonna take a risk. <laughs> I'm trimming off the dielectric away from the center conductor to expose that center conductor because we have to complete the splice.
All right. So you might ask, what's the next step, or are we ready just to land them on the board? And really, you want to make sure that uh, you're using all the parts and pieces of the splice kit. And so that brings me back to those two dielectric grease packets. We definitely want to make sure we're adding or applying the dielectric grease appropriately. And uh, we want to make sure that we do that before we put the final terminal block on. But I don't want to pull these sensors or, or get it gooped up or messed up this way. So first, I'm going to land all these wires and get my board actually attached to the sensor cables themselves. Okay. All right. These are non-polarized. Non it doesn't matter left side, right side. It's simply a short connection between the two, and this is a good RF connection between them. So that's the purpose of that. So I'm going to take this. These are labeled A cable, B cable, center conductor, and sensor wires. So I always like to land my center conductor first because that's what holds it in place. And I generally like to do that for both of my wires because it's going to hold everything in place, and now I have two free hands. Very straightforward and pretty easy. Yeah, it's very simple. Uh, the idea is just pay attention, take your time. Be able to grab those sense wires. Yeah, exactly. We want to be able to grab the sensor wires and place them in the channels. Uh, and it's kind of hard to do that with your fingers. So it's always nice to have some needle nose pliers when you're working on this. Now that I've got my sensor wires placed in the actual slots, I'm going to screw them down, and then I'm going to test to make sure that they're actually connected. So how do you test to make sure they're connected? Because they're such small gauge cable. Sure. Yeah, these little wires, it, it can look like they're all the way in, but sometimes they bump on the edge and they just fold over and it's hard to tell. So once we've got them screwed in, we take the screwdriver and we give a little tug. Pull that side and pull this side. They're both connected. Okay. We'll tighten up these guys on this one. A little tug, a little tug. Oh, you see that one wasn't in there? Okay. That's, that's what happens. Way to that's test. what it looks like. Easily done. We just unscrew the terminal all the way. Take the sensor wire. Push it back up in there. Make sure it stays in the hole this time. Tightening it up, testing, and it's good. So this is where the dielectric packets come in. Do you mind holding these for me? Sure. Thanks. So this is where it gets, uh, gets a little messy, but um, done right, it'll help uh, extend the life of the sensor cables for many, many years. These tubes are provided in the splice unit, as we saw before. I'm gonna take the wire cutter. Always easiest if you cut the end off. And then we want to use one packet for each side. There are two packets provided, and the intention is to allow enough dielectric to completely coat from up here where the mylar is all the way down onto the outer jacket, 360 degrees. Okay. So usually what I do is I start with the back. And then I just work my way back and forth. And apply it very kind generously. Of just squishing it around applying it very generously. And then I use the packet itself to kind of smush it in there. Okay. So we're smushing it in, we're getting all the way back up onto the outer jacket. No need to be gentle with it. This is a pretty robust cable. Uh, what we're looking at here is ensuring that it's covering all of the areas where moisture may go in. So we've got that one gooped up nice and good. Just throw the excess on here just to be safe. And we can toss that one. All right, got those off there. Would you hold that for me? Sure. Thanks. You notice I got a little bit on my hand. Mm -hmm. This stuff is not toxic. It's not bad for you. I don't eat it, <laughs> but uh, it is a dielectric grease, so you can wash it off very easily with some soap and water. 
So we apply it generously, front and back. It's totally coated. I'm gonna use my packet to actually kind of pack it in a little bit and make sure that it's coated, there's not gaps, and just put the excess on there. So that's essentially what it should look like. Goopy, nasty, and gross, completely coated from top to bottom. That's a good connection. That's gonna seal it. Come back five years, it's gonna look exactly the same. It's gonna be firmed up on there. So now we've got the dielectric on. We're gonna take our terminal block, and you see there's two small channels on here. We're gonna land the cables in those channels. And it may take a little wiggle to get them lined up in there, but you can see on the bottom, they're lined up and they're even. Okay. We trimmed it appropriately. The braids are lying on those copper connectors. And then the two thumb wheels that we have, easily used to hold it in place. You've got a complete splice. So we're finished with the splice. We're all done with the splice. Now wow. we just need to mount the box to the actual fence and we can call it good. Slide it down, push the board in, and it simply sits like that. Okay. So this is a lot quicker um, than even splicing any uh, one strand of fiber. Oh yeah, and absolutely. We, and we use three tools and mm -hmm. we're finished in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think that might have been 10, 15 minutes of work yeah. we just did there. Yeah, so essentially we use four cable ties to hold this in place. Thanks. We just take the ties, apply it to the fence in the same way we did with the sensor cable. And we apply those in place, it holds the box down. Okay, so now that we've got our splice complete, we've got our box mounted on our fence, we're gonna trim up a little bit of this excess here. If I can find my cutters. You might have I think I gave now. them to you. <laughs> Trading tools. <laughs> so we trim off the excess, we mount our lid, our splice is complete. At this point in time, when we originally pulled the sensor cable down the line, we had gone to both the link unit side and the processor side, and we had cut the ties holding the drip loop together so that we could have that excess. We don't want to forget, walk back to the processor, put the ties to zip that back to the fence to keep it from flopping around. Joe, thanks for coming out to Southwest Microwaves headquarters today and coming to our test site to learn a little bit more about the Micro Point 2 system. Typically, the splice unit's a little bit lower. It's a single cable run along the midline of the fence, and uh, it doesn't quite look like this with all these cables on here. As we showed, we're able to apply the splice unit, low-cost device, just a few hand tools, little to no training, unlike what you'd need for the fiber optic cables, which require specialized training, specialized tools, good clean weather, and a lot of knowledge with a certified technician. Sure. Thank you very much, Tim. It's been very informative.